Colmet Steel Landscape Edging is a vital part of your overall landscape project. Landscape edging in general is useful for a number of reasons, but using quality Colmet Steel Edging offers many important advantages. Advantages that you just won't find in edgings made from other materials and by other companies. You might already know that common uses of steel edging include but aren't limited to forming clean lines to separate beds and turf, retaining mulch or stone, and defining a walkway or path. But using Colmet steel landscape edging definitely has clear advantages. Manufactured by Collier Metal Specialties in Garland, Texas. In fact, we're family owned and have been operating since 1957. That's over 50 years. So what makes our steel landscape edging so special? It's durable. Colmet is powder coated steel edging available from 14 gauge to quarter inch thick that can typically last 10 to 15 years and resist abuse from string trimmers and mowers. Our edging is a great value. Based on the price per foot and durability, steel edging is a superior value compared to plastic, stone, and wood edging products. It won't become faded, brittle, crack, or break over time. Our edging is functional and provides a long-lasting barrier that slows the advance of unwanted creeping grasses in the planting area or walkway. Also, steel edging is less labor-intensive to install than stone, and desirable soil conditions requires little or no trenching as needed with those plastic edging products. Our quality steel edging is purchased in straight sections, and it's not subject to the coiling effect of products purchased in a roll. And listen to this, our edging is flexible enough to freeform contours and rigid enough for clean straight lines. Yes, Colmet Steel Landscape Edging is a leader in landscape edging. Make the installation of your next do-it-yourself landscape job easier and improve its overall appearance by using quality Colmet Steel Landscape Edging. And installing our edging is easy. For demonstration purposes, we'll be using our standard 8-foot, 14-gauge piece of edging, widely available at many national do-it-yourself retail centers throughout the United States. The first thing you need to do is determine how much edging in linear feet you need to purchase. Now, a measuring wheel is one way of determining linear footage, but using a garden hose is often the easiest because of availability. First, lay the hose down in the shape of the desired bed. This lets you visualize the shape and make adjustments easily. Once you're satisfied, simply straighten out the hose and measure from one end to the other. Doing this will give you the linear footage needed to complete the job. Now keep in mind that these 8 foot long edging pieces overlap each other by 8 inches. So you have to make sure you take that into consideration when determining the number of pieces needed. Removing that 8-inch overlap from your 8-foot edging piece leaves 7 feet 4 inches, or 7.33 feet. That's the number you divide your linear footage by to determine the number of pieces needed. For example, if a job requires 100 feet in total, divide 100 by 7.33 and you get 13.64 pieces needed. Simply round up the number 13.64 to 14, or 14 pieces. The result is that you will need to buy 14 pieces of 8-foot edging to cover 100 feet. It's always a good idea to buy an extra piece or two because you never know how things might change as you work through your job. Now before you start installing your landscape edging, make sure that you have the following tools available. Eye protection, good sturdy gloves, long-handled vice grips, a long-handled crescent wrench, or long-handled channel locks a three-pound hammer, a hacksaw with a good sharp blade in case you need to cut the edging, and finally, a solid piece of scrap wood like a 4x4. With these tools handy, you're ready to get started. We all know that a little bit of planning can often make the installation job a lot easier, right? So if your soil tends to be hard packed, it's a good idea to water the installation area the night before. This can really loosen things up but be careful not to saturate the area. No one wants to work in the mud. Since you've determined the number of steel landscape edging pieces necessary for the project, the next step is to decide on your installation method. There are a couple of different methods, like creating a trench before installation, 
or simply pounding the edging down to its desired depth. If trenching, consider using a sharpshooter shovel or something like a half moon edger. Form your trench in the desired shape or if the ground is soft enough, then simply hammering the edging to your desired depth without a trench is a great option. Now that you're ready to install, remove the attached stakes that are on each end of each piece of edging. Important, remember to wear proper eye protection as well as gloves during installation. Leverage is the key when removing the stakes. That's why using a long handle tool is recommended over something like standard pliers. The longer the handle, the better the leverage. Do not simply try to break or pull the stakes off as this will be difficult to do. Take the edging to a flat surface. Anything from a workbench to the ground will work. Then secure the edging by leaning on it with your hand or your foot. Attach your tool near the large end of the stake. And while holding the edging firmly in place, start to move the stake using small motions. As the tab fatigues, you'll be able to bend the stake back and forth until it eventually snaps off. Repeat the process for the remaining stake and the two stakes on the opposite end. There are four stakes with each piece of edging. But if you look at a single piece of edging, you'll notice that there are six individual stake pockets. You don't need to purchase additional stakes because of the way the pieces overlap at the ends. Therefore, as you connect the pieces end to end, you'll only need four stakes per piece. Once you have all the stakes removed, you're ready to install your Colmet steel edging. It's important that you use caution as needed. There may be irrigation lines or wiring in your bed. If you've trenched your shape beforehand, place a piece of edging into the trench on one end with the stake pockets to the inside. Before installing the stakes, look at the piece of edging and take note of where your next piece of edging will fit onto the first piece. If your next piece of edging fits under the piece you've just placed, then go to the other end of your trench and start there instead. You want to make sure that as you work from one end to the other, that your next piece of edging fits on top of the one you just installed. This will make the installation process much easier as you're not trying to force a piece under what you've already installed. If you didn't trench and you're going to hammer the edging to the desired depth, the same principle applies. Work on top of your first installed piece. When hammering the edging into the ground, it's helpful to use the stakes to hold the edging into place by pushing them into the ground by hand and forming the edging as you go. Once the edging is in place, you can take a step back and look to see if you're satisfied with its shape. If you are, then protect the top of the piece of edging with a piece of 4x4. And working along the piece of edging, hammer it to the desired depth. Don't try and just hammer one end down because this will only drive the opposite end up and out of the ground. Work at various points back and forth along the piece of edging until you get to your desired depth. We recommend an installed depth of two inches to slow the spread of invasive grasses. This leaves two inches above ground to retain mulch or stone. Once you have the edging installed to the desired depth, make sure that all of the stake tops are flush or slightly lower than the top of the edging. Backfill as needed. Now here are a few helpful tips when installing your Colmet steel landscape edging. Use a block of wood or the edge of a table to assist in making corner bends. This helps you keep your corner straight. When using 14 gauge thick edging, there's no need to score or cut the edging to make corners. When cutting the edging, make sure you have on safety glasses and gloves, along with a saw with a good sharp metal blade. Lay the edging flat to cut it. Don't cut from top to bottom. Once you've made it about halfway through the thickness, the edging can be bent back and forth until it breaks at the cut line. If you can't get the edging to separate at the cut line, then you'll need to cut deeper and try bending it again. Once you've successfully cut the edging into two pieces, be careful. The cut ends can be hot to the touch. If you experience a grade change in your run of edging, simply cut the edging and overlap the pieces accounting for the grade change. Then use a separately purchased splicing stake to cover the overlap. If you're going to start your project at a sidewalk, run the edging along that sidewalk approximately 12 to 18 inches before the bed starts. 
When fully installed, the top of the edging should be flush or lower than the top of the sidewalk. If a root or rock keeps a stake from being fully inserted into the stake pocket and flush with the top of the piece of edging, then you can simply skip that particular stake pocket and move to the next one. You can use a separately purchased splicing stake in the general area if desired. If your project ends and it wasn't necessary to cut the final piece to size, leaving the attached stakes attached is a good option. Simply use a splicing stake at the end or use a separately purchased extra stake inserted through the stake pockets to hold the end in place. To make large tree rings using the straight eight foot pieces of edging, just remove the attached stakes and attach the pieces together using the stakes. Then bring the ends together. Adjust as needed and install to the desired depth. Using two of the eight foot sections will result in a circle of four and a half feet in diameter and using three eight-foot sections will result in a circle of roughly seven feet in diameter. When properly installed, Colmet Steel Landscape Edging remains functional for years, whether you're slowing the creep of invasive grasses or other plants, retaining mulch or stone, or if you've just lined a walkway. Quality Colmet Edging is an effective tool in completing your project and reducing maintenance time for years to come. Colmet Edging is available at many large do-it-yourself home centers, as well as local independent garden centers. Please check the Colmet website at www.colmet.com and select where to buy to search your state for availability. If Colmet is not available near you, it can be special ordered through the larger do-it-yourself home centers around the country. Please contact your nearest store or Colmet for details and restrictions.